can't help but smiling from my heart being with Emil. Emil has been our guide from Cairo, now on the Affendina. We are so blessed to have this beautiful spiritual guide. He was born very close to where we're going to be this afternoon. He was born in Luxor and literally lived on top of the temple that later got um, renovated and excavated. Yeah. You are an expert Egyptologist, licensed in every shape and form, so respected. And we get to spend our trip connecting with the most divine aspects of the temples, of the pyramids, of the Nile, because you know how to read energy. You feel things and you know exactly where to, where to guide us and how to guide us. And so I'm so excited for everyone to meet you, Emil. Well, thank thank you. you. Thank you. It's in fact been a big pleasure to be with you because you are a great teacher and you gave me the chance to share you the love I have of Egypt because love is sharing. And I love this. And I never get tired of that after 40 years of doing it. And also I believe that these places were so sacred. None of the ancient teaching or none of the religions, we call it religions now, yeah. had been last as long as the ancient teaching of the Egyptians lasted. Uh, that's so important. I want to share that again. None of the teachings of any religion yeah. has lasted longer than the teachings of the Egyptians. It is. If we look at the teaching of the Egyptians about God, whether they were right or wrong, but it's past 7,000 years. We know I don't think at least 7,000 years, least, at, at least. least. This one thing. The other thing is the high technique you're seeing on the temples which no one at, until now, it's not only the teaching of the religion, it's how they build, yes. how they carve. It's that you find every day there is new theories. Yes. But, and every theory you look at or you accept, but tomorrow, <laughs> there, it's like, it's like the history of Egypt is like an ocean. Whatever you get out of it, never like, like, like getting empty. Yeah, it's, there's such a vast, set of downloads, of information, of beautiful um, wisdom. And every time you walk into a temple, every time you walk in with someone who knows how to communicate energy at the highest levels, the, va the ocean of information is navigated perfectly for you to receive what's there, the maximum level of what you can receive that's present. And what is beautiful is the ocean of information, the vastness of what's available. You can show it to us with the delight for us to understand. You share it in stories. You share it in the way you communicate with each person along the way. You share it with how you um, respect the walls. You share it with how you show reverence for everything, not just at the temples. Because I believe but, in it. Yes. I believe what I'm doing. And I believe that those people were close to God more than us. Yes. They know the short way to reach God. Plus, what I found that the Egyptian religion or the Egyptian teaching permitted man to have life after death, as we call it in all religions. Yes. Not through beliefs, but through work. Through work. And that's, that's the peak. Of, and this is the highest you can teach the people. Yeah. That if you are a stone cutter and you do the, your job fine. Yeah. This is how it takes to you, God. So if 
what you're doing, what you're doing, you're doing to the maximum reverence in the moment that you can do it, this is access to uh, heaven. And I love the temple that we were in yeah. that you pointed out on the walls. Here are the five senses. Yeah. Here is the thin veil. Yeah. When the five senses are united, a veil comes, opens, a sixth sense is yes, available yes. and you step into heaven yes, you are. in this space. That's and what they said. That's, that's what's said on the walls in the temples carved for all time. Stone is the hardest record keeper. Paper melts, paper burns. Everything can that's be done to any other way that we've found to record information, but stone Stone that's, that's, yeah. holds the record. And, and it's a fingerprint of God. It's a fingerprint of God. In yeah. Egypt, these temples, the pyramids, are a fingerprint of God yes. that we get to access and the keys, the doors unlocked. We have, we're given the keys, we're shown the doors, and we're guided through because right. We, it can only be entered through the inner dimensions, what is available on the walls. Right, right, right. And that's the, they show us the doors we can get. Yes. And the doors, and every, it, it matches every like period of time. It's so there's like a certain amount, uh, a, a dose, Yes. as a quantity that can be handled and you get the exact quantity that you're ready for. That's, that's exactly. Yes. And it's like, it takes me like, I can't, you see in the video you had, you look at the temples. Yes. This after two, three thousand years, but imagine, just imagine how this were with the colors. Yeah. How these were with the, when they have everything. You look at the museum, we have over the 50,000 pieces in the museum on yeah. the display, plus the things which has been taken, the British Museum, yes. Metropolitan Museum, the Louvre. Yes. Imagine all these stuff are in the place. Imagine how it is, yeah. how it's going with the colors and everything. I'm trying all my life to imagine. Then when I start meditating and think how it was, I found like a, sh a camera shutter to look inside, <laughs> always to look inside and see. Yes. It, just, it just closed again. Yeah. And it's hard to imagine. It's just like the best way to I just feel it and live on it. Or it's hard to understand too. Yeah. Because our bodies, I feel that our bodies understand that. Yeah. Our bodies are temples. Yeah. And we get the access to the inner knowing, the inner listening, the inner dimensions. Those inner dimensions were always available. But now the keys to unlock them have been revealed and access, they're accessible. And the exact key that you need shows up for you because there's so many keys. And each person in every dimension, in every part of them that they are, the, spa the physical dimension, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual all become lined up in such a way to have access to that key, that to is. that information, exactly, to yes. that knowing, yes. to being able to hear themselves and to hear everything with a new perspective, new eyes to yes. see with, and new think, ears yeah. and new senses to experience it with. Totally. I said the past 20 years, the past 20 years, there's a big revolution of understanding this. Yes. And people were trying to just like to come to the source. Yes. When you're coming to understand this wisdom, you're coming to the source of the wisdom. So Egypt and is the source of is. the wisdom. The it last is. 20 years, so many of us have woken up to yes. know, wow, you've got to experience it and know it for yourself. It can only be accessed whether from inside yourself. Yeah, and wait 
Wait, I know you've seen a lot, like Ifu, Horus, Philae, yes. the feminine. Yes. You can see, you go to the temple, this is the very, the, all the structures are the same. Yes. But it's a different energy. Yes. If you go to Isis, you want to, you don't want to leave. We were four hours in the Isis. We don't want to leave. We did Go to Horus. It's very masculine because that's where the fire took place. Yes. Now we're coming to the highlights of Egypt. Yes. Which is the Karnak and which I regard to be it's the, the school of religion. The school, the teaching of, of, of history. Yes. This is like the cathedral of ancient Egypt. The yeah. cathedral of ancient Egypt. Yeah. And the experience has been building and building and building. We've been unlocking parts of ourselves. Yeah. We've been opening and becoming more and more available. And so to enter your, your region, your land, but this space that you take care of, that oh, has taken you. care of you. You also manifest that. Yes. You had a trip, or you came before, or the people that we came before. It's the group energy. When people, yes. I see that everyone in the group is caring about everybody. Yes. And you let me do the thing, and it's your energy which manifests that. Yes. You, ma you are a big <laughs> manifester. I'm just telling you the truth. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Which is, um, Emil is referring to a previous trip. We came with another group and um, other leaders were with us. And this time it's just um, myself, my husband, and um, Greg Roach leading. Yeah. And there is a beautiful group of people with us. And the journey has been so transformative. The transformation has been during the meals. The transformation has been during the conversations. The transformation has been in allowing the energy, you to guide us, Muhammad to guide us, and each part of it, each person contributing the maximum yeah. level of heart energy. I love everyone comes to Egypt. And I wish everybody having like the perfect time in Egypt yes. and get his experience. Yes. Get his initiation, I would say. Yes. But you have to trust. Yes. Because sometimes people come from different parts of the world. Yes. Which is not like poor to trust. Yes. We're here trusting each other and like I enjoyed the trip. Yes. I really enjoyed the trip and more to come. Well, um, what will we see in Luxor? What We're are going to see today the fabulous temple of Karnak. And we're going to see also the fabulous chapel of the living goddess her, uh, Sekhmet, her uh. husband Bitah, and we will experience the Temple of the Moon. We'll see what yes. we're going to do. And tomorrow we're going to one of the highlights of Egypt, which is Abydos. Abydos is the place where the ancient Egyptians believed that the backbone and the head of Osiris is buried. Yes. And we're going to see the Temple of Hathor, which represents love and joy. And if you look at the ceiling of it, it's all about the zodiac. Yes. and what's in the heaven because they believe that the, the, they bring the heaven into the earth and in two words that place represents heaven and earth yeah. so we are going to <coughs> many temples today with the heart and all the different chambers of the heart respected valued the keys inside our hearts elevated and opened and then tomorrow abydos where the ancients so revere that area. Yeah. Osiris, the backbone of the, the one that brought order and peace and harmony to the lands. It's buried there. And then we're um, into music and joy and love in the Hathor temple. Yeah. So thank you so thank you. much. Thank, you. thank, thank you. you. If there are Americans listening, what would you tell Americans? I say, I will tell one thing, that we've been like, we never dug in a city. Yes. We stayed overnight in the villages. Yes. And there is a very interesting story happened to your husband today. Yes. Me and him walked to the village, and we want to buy melons. The man already sold them. Yes. But the minute we get in there, he cuts a melon. Yes. And he starts feeding us a melon. Yes. And he, they gave us one free, and they, yeah. yes. That's how Egypt is. It's safe. And it's like this is the place everybody should 
be, should be seen. Yes. And I wish Americans bring their kids to Egypt yes. to show what they call poverty. We don't have poverty, but then they yeah. appreciate what they have in America. Yeah, I, I yeah. do want to bring my kids here. Yeah. It's our intention yeah. to bring our um, beautiful, now right now, 10-year-old, 8-year-old. So that's a promise. Thank we're you. Gonna bring and our pleasure, kids. and we're going to have a good time. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.